Today we're going to explore a new build which we've been working on for three months. This is actually the third build. We have 12 permanent magnets on a stator, 60 millimeter, 20 millimeter. We have 12 permanent magnets on a rotor, all 20 millimeter, eight on the outside, four on the inside. And this is based on the Lurkley Hill crop circle of 2005. You can see 12 on the outside, eight and four. This is a blueprint if you want to build it yourself. 60 millimeter, 20 millimeter magnets, and it works by the principle of lift to track. The outer magnets lift the inner ones by reverse field levitation. There's a reverse field in the center, and that's how they lift it. Now, nearby at the same time, this remarkable in and out, down up crop circle appeared like the Escher stairs. And it's basically like these triangles, which suggests the thing might want to spin forever. And this crop circle was one of the most UFO visited of all time. A man on his bicycle saw four of these racks, roof rack UFOs making it. Stuart Dyke kindly interviewed him. And a Frenchman, a few weeks later, saw this UFO flying right above it in his films. So with all that in, in mind, the roof rack UFOs and that, and the rotor, let's give it a very weak spin just to see what happens in the very first experiment to see how it behaves. And then we'll continue with more details. It looks like it wants to spin forever, almost like perpetual motion. I barely touched it. Look at it spin. Apart from the friction from the rod or imbalance, it might spin forever. So that's a preliminary study. We'll continue more to see if we can improve on this device with further study. Now we've glued in four magnets all north up near the center. So the whole top rotor is all in up, 12 magnets. We put a little graphite in the wooden rod and we're going to make it slippery and we'll see how long it spins this way. Spinning quite nicely at 30 seconds. You can get two kinds of friction. One's friction from the rod, the other's friction because the magnets haven't really been placed evenly. It's hard to get them exactly right. It's still spinning very well. One minute. One minute, 10 seconds. One minute, 20 seconds. One minute, 30 seconds. One minute, 40 seconds. One minute, 50 seconds. So just by putting a little graphite in the wooden rod, we've got the, the friction that spins a bit longer. We'll see what else we can do. Now we've glued in four magnets here as N up. So you have all N up, all N up, all N up, 12, 8, 4. And I've put the wooden rod with a bit of graphite on it. I made the hole in the middle here 7 millimeters rather than 6.5 so it doesn't scrape on the 6 millimeter rod as much. So let's spin it and see if we have any improvements. Now some of the friction is due to touching the rod. Other parts of the friction will be due to the fact that we haven't glued the magnets in exactly. There's a bit of imperfection. The thing will just naturally tend to stall out if the magnets aren't glued exactly. So we've got two sources of imperfection that'll slow it down. So now we're at 40 seconds, 50 seconds. Still spinning. We're getting rid of the friction of the rod. If the magnets are imperfect, we have to make another build more accurately. It's not bad for just a third build. There's 60 millimeter magnets of the, magnets of the big ones and 20 millimeter magnets of the other ones, all near Damium M52. 
still spinning nicely at 1 minute 10 seconds. This is about the best we can do unless we make another build. 120, still spinning nicely. One thirty five, one forty five, starting to wobble and slow down now a bit. One fifty, two minutes. Spins a long time, doesn't it? A frictionless magnetic gear, it, part of the accuracy of which we built it. Two minutes ten. Two minutes twenty. Two minutes and thirty seconds. So that's about all we can do unless we build the thing more accurately. The locally held crop picture of 2005 frictionless magnetic gear. That's all for now. More to come soon.